Hello everyone, it's Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo here again with another Ben's Day with Batgirl and Ben. Ben, it's been a while. I'm so sorry I stood you up so many weeks in a row. That's all right. I stood you up also. We we are like a in a codependent relationship where we are just ruining each other's lives. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I just go to speak and it hasn't been happening for me. But you know what? I started streaming this week. Oh, awesome. What are you streaming? X-Plane. Cool. Gosh, I remember X playing in the '90s, and I it was too smart for me then, and it must be much smart, much more smarter than I am now. So let me tell you about the the model that they have. They built the world to fly in, and you got to buy aircraft. Mm -hmm. Does it sound like anybody else's model? <laughs> I, I remember that you could download aircraft back in the day. People would post their own versions of like spaceships and things to add to X plane. But now they get licensed aircraft from Cessna and from Bombardier and from Boeing, and you pay. Could you believe paying a hundred dollars for an airplane? No, that's a totally digital cool, airplane. <laughs> that is cool. I would I would be into that. And I mean, I, Ali has really gotten to uh, GTA Online, and I, I just bought her like eight million dollars so she could get a flying motorcycle so i get that a flying motorcycle wait gta just added flying flying motors flying motorcycles do you think That's... they're stealing things from is, is there an ip breach of of something there i i am it's sure not they... called a dragonfly is it i think a flying motorcycle is a universal concept that all <laughs> dream of okay but you know what Star Citizen has that GTA Online doesn't have? Asteroids. Two flying motorcycles. Two flying motorcycles. Wait, wait, wait. We're going to get to that. Don't let that okay. go. Okay? <laughs> You're going to have to answer my question in a little bit. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's go to my, my favorite um, every week person that has put like a million questions in here. And that's Soloth Carr. And he's saying, seeing that recovery and rescue... Only has one dedicated ship so far, the Cutlass Red. Will we see a bigger ship that allows oh, a bigger ship that is following that profession, maybe specialized and constellation size? Oh, the constellation would make the perfect Nightingale, you know, the uh, C9 um, that uh, has room for a small tender and, you know, kind of like room for ambulances. It's kind of like the hospital ship, the Endeavor, but smaller. Yeah, the hospital Endeavor. Um, not in the near future. I mean, it's, it's certainly. It's a good idea, but it's not one we have on the map right now. So I can't configure a constellation as a hospital. Oh, no, you, you can configure whatever you want for existing ships, but I'm thinking I'm, I think they must mean a bespoke. You know, it's just for this, and uh, I, you know, we we have the small one, we have the very large one, and we can go in and fill in the rest later if we feel like it's there, but not not on the current schedule. I'm kind of lost because I thought the Origin 600 was coming out, but now I hear... Oh, well, we'll talk about that in a few. All um, right. Apollo says, will something, will something that, without any amount of even faintly realistic doubt, permanently kill your character, regardless of how many times you've had close calls? For instance, if you've just entered the universe with your character, and you jump into dangerous space, and a pirate could capture you and somehow track you into a star drop you into a volcano and somehow <laughs> hold you long enough for you to die of dehydration or do something else that would definitely kill you. Would your character be gone after the first time of dying or would they magically appear at a hospital missing some limbs and vital organs? <laughs> well, the short answer is I don't know. I, I, I do not know where they are with that mechanic. That's all on the Tony side. Uh, bigger question is I never want anyone to answer that question. I, that is you what wake up in the shower it was all a dream. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that people need to figure out for themselves. I want people to go and get their friends and try to push them into stars and find out what happened. You know, it's, That's the great mystery of life. There's a black hole somewhere in that universe. I know there is because I saw that stretch goal. I w I'm going to have to talk to Tony or whoever. Do you think that there'll be physics that drag you into the black hole and stretch you out like the giant stretchy... Uh, sim uh, what's Bar um, Not Bart. It was his father, wasn't it? Homer Simpson? Going oh, yeah, the, the 3D hole? episode. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Or uh, remember the uh, the Star Trek motion picture? Uh, 
Photon Torpedo. Yes, that was right. <laughs> uh, but that, that is so definitely many. a Sherry question. Yeah, yeah that's... Uh, wait, wait, who's? Sherry? 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 I, I, I okay. am terrible because they can say her name wrong. Because... All right. So Solothkar wants to add another one with the 600 around the corner. Will we see an industrial ship from Origin at some point? I don't see Origin doing an industrial ship anytime soon. It, it would just doesn't meet their Ducati. aesthetic. I see them making a Ducati-like bike. That's what I see. No, yeah, they, they are a logical choice for a third bike. I'll, I'll give them that. Uh, well, it's already in lore, right? <laughs> I mean, it would make sense, but, you know, we don't have to follow lore when we make ships. Everything could change in a heartbeat, right? I prefer to go with the lore. Okay, so Ducati. I want a Ducati. <laughs> I want to be like, I want to be like Green Arrow's sidekick on Ed's Ducati. <laughs> I associate Ducati with uh, Tomb Raider, so thanks. Oh, early you do? Tomb Raider. Yeah, she she had a Ducati in those uh, oh, yeah, 360 right. games. They like okay. a branding deal. Now, if, if Ducati is out there and they want to have some sort of agreement, like the the folks with Porsche did uh, for Forza, and we we they can give us all bikes, that would that would be cool. That would be amazing. Um, you know, it would be awesome if you go to Ducati and say, hey, we're a space game. Could you design a space bike for us and see what they come up with? Mm -hmm. They charge you like three and a half million bucks, though. But, you know, it, it might be worth it. Captain Kern. Oh, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them. I've seen the financials. It wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> Shh. Sure. Don't talk about financials on this show after the whole <laughs> stuff that went on with. Richard Garriott's place when he started asking for mom, more money. We don't do that. We don't talk about financials. I heard about Everything that. Everything is doing... fine. Everything is good here. And then shoot the right. Yeah, everything's great here. <clears throat> I, I did. I heard Richard was doing uh, equity crowdfunding. Which it's kind of cool. I know nobody's. You don't really see games doing that. So I think that's pretty awesome. I saw another game that was doing not just crowdfunding but doing investing, equity crowdfunding that way. That was the new. Uh, it's the original makers of XCOM. Ah, it's like okay. Phoenix. I forget what the name of their game was. But, you know, you come to me with a good um, with a good Kickstarter, and I'll throw money at you. And that was a good Kickstarter. Phoenix something or other. Um, and I finally got something f that I Kickstarted for 18 months ago. I got a box that says Star Traders on it. We got ours today, too. We got two crates of them. He sent them right here to the office. Um, I, In fact, I got my copy... Uh Al, you got my. Can you read my Star Traders book? Yeah, mine's downstairs. I don't know if she heard me. I'm gonna open mine on. You, sh you guys should have like that instant just think to it. <laughs> so while we're waiting for her, Captain Kern wants to run an idea by you. We have the whole series ships, and we need tugs. So ask Ben if a tug attachment can be made in place of cargo splines. Would take all the splines in one of the four directions from front to back, various sizes. So what he's saying is we need tugs for something that big? I, I agree with him. Um, I will say that every time we've started down the road of doing a tug, it has become something completely different, uh, beginning with the uh, the anvil repair ship we did two years back. The, oh, my God, I'm blanking on the name. Crucible, the Crucible. Okay. Um, you know, it started life as, oh, we need a tug for big ships, we need a tug. So um, oh, I'll just give that one a we know. We know. Okay. So if you, were a, if you were a fox and you wore socks and you stood in a box, what kind of a space bike would you fly? I would knox. <laughs> come on. Um, it was too easy. Oh, come on. It's like, oh, I'm looking for questions, and all I have is comments. I've been making Knox jokes Nikki, all week. Nikki, why are you so far away? You have Fox and, Fox and Sox, Fox on Knox? Just wait till Citizens of the Stars on Monday. Oh, God. I try to get you it all out of my system there. You had me watching. It's like I was hiding in a corner trying to watch you with uh, talk about uh, Wing Commander 3 today. Oh, Wing 3, yeah. Oh, that, oh God, I love that game. I love, do, I love doing those streams. I hope people enjoy them. Will I be able to kite hostile aliens like Vanduul into UE systems for fun and profit? I, probably. 
Uh, I would hope so. They'll follow Wait, you through jump holes? What was the verb? Oh, yeah, it, I mean, that's all AI stuff. Well, Kite. You know, like kiting. Like you, the, yeah, lead somebody. Yeah. You, you right. go and shoot something and run away. Then you shoot it again. You run away. You know, kiting. Yeah. I used to do that with the ancient Cyclops in EverQuest. It helped, you know? Um, when This is from China Shop Rodeo. When we get component cooling hardware in the game, will I be able to use it to refrigerate by and refrigerate my space beer? Every hardworking spacer deserves a good cold beer bottle of suds. I've been... Okay. I mean, really what you should do is you just pop the canopy or the door and you, you, you chill the beer... In that's the like, endless that's void like of free, space. That's, that's instant frozen. I mean, you're talking about like minus 300 degrees, you know? It's like, <laughs> yeah, here's my can, boom, it explodes in your hand and like bits and pieces like of It may like flash beer. boil or something, but it's mm-hmm. fine. It's very cold in space. There'll be plenty, of, is, plenty of ways to keep your beer cold. Everything is fine. So I've been there um, twice when you were putting together the monthly report. Um, once in 2014, once in 2015. Has that gotten, that, that whole process, has that gotten any better over the it's years? It's so much better now. Uh, in fact, it's, have you been reading my email? I, I just said, like last week, I just sent this thanks email to uh, Justin and Ari, my uh, producer here, and uh, Jared, because uh, the, the process is so much easier now. Everything is just comes together. It's great. Because you know they do the studio reports and then they take the, the they take the material from the studio reports. It goes to the writers. They turn it into a, a thing for each studio, and they, they do it weekly. So by the time we get to the monthly report, it's all set up. The production has that down. They they are on the ball. Um, I think someday when we look back at Star Citizen, you know, years and years when we're telling the story of you know each year of development, this past year will be the one where production really got awesome they they, they it, it just all happens everything works it's great well that's good that's good i know that it was very stressful when you were there because you were like waiting for chris just to write his one little piece yeah i think it was a letter that day and it was yeah, a, all... he was flying in at four o'clock and you had to put this out by the time you went home it was really stressful yeah, a lot of late nights but it, it, it was so much fun uh do you miss the old days Nerf yeah. battles in the office. You know? I mean, I'm 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 a nostalgic guy, so I I miss everything that has come before. Um, but it, it, it's one of those things where stuff feels different now, but it's it's also good. Um, it, it feels like things are coming together. You you see how it's all happening now. Um, it feels like a mature machine. So one of the things I saw there when I went the first two times was. Chris's passion um, pretty much in, it was reflected in everybody's comments. Everybody that was there the first time, two times I was there really had Christian's vision in his eyes. Has that change gotten better? Has it gotten a little bit more varied because you have more people? No, I mean Chris is and I was actually saying this on the Wing 3 stream earlier Chris, Chris retains the ability to just see the whole thing you know Chris, ever, from the start, he's understood how to manage such a giant project, and it, it's totally beyond me. He, that vision is very secure, I would say. Good, good. I, I love visiting there. I know that the first few times I had a lot more access to things than the last time, but it, it, it always is. Just to be able to walk there and get the feeling of what's going on. You could always tell it in the way that people are working by the what, what they're doing. Do you have somebody waiting for you? Oh, no, I just saw somebody walk by. I wanted to see who it was, but I missed okay. them. Okay. It's all right. I, I, I just love seeing that everybody is all on. That, that's why when it comes down to the game, I've never questioned it making it out. So, I mean, I always knew that everybody there was doing everything they could to give us that best game space have, simulator ever. I never have either. You know, uh you know, we had all this battling back and forth with you know folks trolling the community and oh that's never going to come out blah 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 blah. I, there was never there has not been a minute in the last four years where I thought oh we're gonna we're gonna miss this and 
certainly we're going to be delayed it's going to take longer than we thought that that's always that's a constant but never in my mind i mean it, it, it it's always felt like we would get there and okay yeah and it's coming like a freight train though nobody knows that until we actually see it right yeah so, i mean we always going to who's going to change the minds i suspect all right, I'm going to ask a couple of email messages now. This one's from Jonathan Hurley. The first messages were from the Discord channel. These were sent to me personally by different viewers of mine. And he wants to know, when will we be able to buy the Ursa Rover in the store page? I think we offered the Ursa Rover once before, um, and we will be bringing it back, uh, of course, by 3.0. Um, we will have some other options and things, and we'll awesome. have to... Will we see the Lynx concept anytime soon? A little bit further out. Um, that's one of those. I we kind of classify that as a variant. Variants are less essential because they, you know, it's it's a we work from one to the other, and yeah. when the Ursa works, it means the Lynx will work. So it's less of a tech thing, um, but it it is it's in the pipeline. Okay. And as I say, you'll you'll see some other stuff to tide you over. I just want whatever they're going to give me in my Carrick. That um, last update on the Carrick just got me. And then the Terrapin this week. Oh, my God. Just stop People showing me candy really and just give it to terrapin. me. <laughs> oh, God. They're just dangling it in front of me, though. It's not like they're giving it to me, you know? Um, I was super impressed with that Terrapin stuff. It's, it's oh, the Terrapin so was good. nice. Yeah. That, that's a very good ship for what it's made for. I love how the armor comes over the canopy to protect it more. Got to keep those guys alive, right? Yes. All right. So with profession, this is from Thomas Campbell. And this is with profession themed concept sales coming in the future. Can we expect to see a pure dedicated bounty hunting ship at some point? Both the Avenger and Cutlass seem to be multi-role with options that allow for bounty hunting, but aren't necessarily built from the ground up for only one role. A good comparison might be the Vanguard Harbinger compared to the recently released Eclipse. The Harbinger is a bomber, but multi-role. Sort of big sibling to the Avenger, while the Eclipse seems to be a specialist ship pure, um, dedicated purely to for stealth bombing and little else. It's a tough question. Um... I should have cut that one down. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's cool. Um... I see kind of two issues with it. One is that it's it's hard to pin down what a dedicated bounty hunter ship would be that's separate from a fighter. Just a bounty hunter needs to be able to engage dogfight with his prey, and he, he you know, it's, essentially a bounty hunter ship would always be a fighter and also storage or you know, a place for to carry a person. So it's it's hard to imagine how you pitch that as this is the ship that's just for bounty hunting because you know like the the avenger it's it was a ship that was essentially built for that purpose built for exactly that it's a police ship so it, it has the cell in the back in the base form and it it is a dogfighter um so i think that's the first problem with having a bounty hunter ship the other one is just imagining you know and i love empire strikes back it's an amazing movie I mean, everything about star wars is wonderful but I think they overblow the role of bounty hunters in futuristic space society. Um, and I'm, I'm not talking in terms of gameplay because there's going to be crazy amounts of gameplay for them. It, it's, it will certainly, I mean, it's one of the easiest things to make fun. But just in the, you know, lens out view of the UEE as a whole, you know, if they don't make cars just for bounty hunters. You know, they, right. it's more of a, you, you take a Jeep and you, you make it the way you want for your particular role. Um, I, I don't see it being a, a profession in the world that's super, super, super giant. Um, so I, I kind of like the idea more that you take you take existing ships that would fit the role, you know, a police ship with cell in the you back. Or, max it. Yeah, or a, a cargo ship that can also fight, and you turn it into that role. Because that's, that's like the heart of the bounty hunter. They're, they are private. These are people who are beholden to no one. They are, they are making their own way in the universe. So it's, it would be weird to market to that on the in-game side. Um, it, it, I, you know, I've always kind of, I've never liked the Slave One so much because why is there a distinct bounty hunter ship that Boba Fett has? Why not just 
any why not, why isn't it a car the Chameleon Falcon is perfect because it's a cargo ship that is also our hero ship that Han Solo has modified and made his own but and I mean I'm sure there is uh, what is it like a fire spray class so I'm sure there's background to the slave one that makes it more interesting right. that I don't know right now but it always just struck me as odd that Boba Fett who's a guy or he was originally just a guy why does he have a special ship because he's Boba Fett no but just, I, I know but what's the ship is about I, I do think it's possible so I will leave it at that all right I, I mean it is possible but I, I like the way that you put it because when I think bounty hunter I think of somebody that doesn't have a lot of money in the beginning so they have to start with something that's not so great and as they make money from their bounties they're just sticking parts on to whatever ship they have making it better throwing more armor on throwing more weapons putting the cells in the back so just yeah. tie strapping his hands together and throwing them in the back um yeah um it, it will always because yeah, it's one of our major professions. It will always be something that comes up when we're talking about ships. But yeah, that, that, that's I guess that's the kind of stuff we talk about when we we pitch ships. Okay. So will Uber or Lyft be a big thing in the Star Citizen universe? <laughs> will Uber be a big thing next year? <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> hey Siri, can I have a lift? <laughs> no, <laughs> don't talk. I don't want a lift. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, actually, this, that's one of the professions we've been looking at a lot lately because people are more and more vocal about how they want to deliver passengers. And, that's and one this, of the- I'm going to be vocal right now. A Avenger in a New York City yellow cab paint scheme. And that's that's like a classic MMORPG quest. You go to yeah. you go to Britain, and there's an NPC who's like, "Verily, escort me to Trinsic. And I mean, that's it's <laughs> an easy mission. It's pretty awesome. You know, Ben, it's so good to be back. And I hope we can do this more often now that yeah. I, I'm learning to speak from the front of my voice instead of from the back of my voice. And um, hopefully as 3.0 nears, you don't get so little time that you have none for us. I, I will always try to make time for you. It's, it's um, going to be a busy couple of weeks, but uh, I'll be around. So Knox is up next. 300 is uh, 600 is coming sometime after that. Mm-hmm. What's your what's your favorite type of ship? Not name, but type of ship that will be built over the next year. I can't even say that because it would give it away, but we have a game changer coming up. Oh god. We have something that everybody's going to go, oh, they're doing that. And that's my favorite reship reveal. Is You're where, making the bagel carrier. We are not making the bagel carrier. Well, no, we're not making the <laughs> It's a floating bakery that's also a spaceship. You're making the TARDIS. No. Okay. That's good. It's, it's, it's one people aren't expecting. And it'll okay. Be good. You're going to let us buy a kingship? <laughs> I don't I don't think anyone could afford a kingship. <laughs> okay, no problem. Ben, thank you so much. I will touch base with you Monday, Wednesday and Friday next week and see when we can actually get together. Okay? All right, just keep just keep bugging me and we'll get I'm it. I'll we'll bug you, it. but I'll just send you one or two texts every now and no, then question you never marks. Want it. It's never it's yeah, never like good. you're annoying me. It's, it's it's always good to hear from you. I appreciate it. And for all of those that want to get their questions in, two ways. One is to send them to StarCitizenAA at gmail.com with Ben's Day, Ben's Day right there in the subject field. The other one is look in the comments section, well, look in the description below and just click on the link to the Discord channel and then go to the Ben's Day area. That's it. Sometimes Ben might have a chance, never. To look at those and be pre-warned at what questions are coming. Never. To- oh, you know, I actually started using Discord like personally yeah. finally, and it's it's really good. Then you should join the Star Citizen AA channel, so you know what Ben's Day questions are coming up. You should use just- join my Wing Commander channel. Oh God, I will after today. That was awesome. Again, amazing. Thank you for bringing those old memories back. It's making me reload that from good old games. I just love that game. It's a great right. game. And it's time for me to go get carbonara. So with that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, Ben.